So last video, we got our UI set up. This time, it's time to create some items we can collect that will send data to our inventory manager. Let's get started. So this inventory system is really built around your inventory manager that we created in the last scene. This manager will serve as a sort of go-between for our other scripts. So in this tutorial, we'll be adding an item script, which will handle the actual items you see in the game and all of the data that they're going to be passing on. And we will also be adding in an item slot, which will be the actual slots in the inventory that show what items you currently have. Now the way this is set up is that we're going to use the inventory manager as our go-between so that when you collect an item, it will simply send that information up to the inventory manager, which will then pass that information along to the item slot. While this might seem like a little roundabout way to do it, why not just have the item talk immediately to the item slot? As the inventory system becomes more complex, this will be more and more clear why, as it will help us to avoid having a weird situation of spider webs where the item is talking to every different item slot over and over again. And also as we add more systems, like perhaps an equipment manager and a te uh, tech tree, that sort of thing, it will help everything to flow smoothly through one thing, the inventory manager, and then off to the destination it needs to get to, rather than having items need to be programmed to talk to many different managers and many different slots. All right, so our first step today is going to be to create the items that you can collect on your map. So let's head on over to the hierarchy where we're simply going to create an empty object and I'm just going to call this one item. Now underneath our item, I'm going to create again and this time make a 2D sprite. Now for the moment, I'm just going to put a square there. And this is actually just going to be the sprite for our object. I always like to keep the item and sprite separate. That way, if later on I want to add physics, I can put those on the parent while I can have any animations or graphics happen separately and that way my animations won't fight with my physics. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, you could just keep your placeholder object here like a square, though I am going to change my sprite to something a little more interesting looking. To do that, I'm just going to click on the actual sprite in my sprite renderer. And I have a series of items, so my first sample item I'm going to make is going to be a coffee, so I'll just set that up. Now before we get into scripting this, I just want to add two components quickly. The first is just going to be a box collider 2D. I will be leaving mine as a collider, not a trigger, and that's because I like to use physics in my items so that they can pop up in the air and bounce and land on the ground, that sort of thing. I'm going to be adding a rigid body 2D as well so that I can have those gravity and physics aspects. With that done, I'm going to get this script started. So I'm going to head down here to my assets and we'll create a new C Sharp script. This one is simply going to be called item and I'll open that right up. Now we're going to make this script a fairly generic one that we can be used for every item that we collect in our game. We're going to need to store just a little bit of data here which will then be passed on to the inventory manager so that our inventory slots know what to show. The first thing we're going to do here is keep track of our item name. And I'm going to serialize this field and make it private. If you haven't seen that before, the serialize field tag just allows this to actually show up in our inspector so that we can edit it in Unity. The reason I'm keeping it private is because in complex systems, we sometimes have many names that are very similar. And because of that, we can sometimes end up editing data without realizing it. And we don't want other scripts to have access to this. It'll just keep us from running into a lot of bugs later on as things get more complex. Now we're going to have three of these serialized fields. One is going to be for item name. We're also going to create an integer for the quantity, the number of items you want to collect when you hit this item. And finally, we are also going to have a sprite, which will just keep track of the image that goes along with this. Now next up, we need this script to be able to talk to our inventory manage. So we'll create a private inventory manager. And again, I'm just using the exact name of the script that we wrote in the last tutorial. And I'll call this one inventory manager. We can head down into our start method in order to tell this script how to find it. And we'll just tell it that the inventory manager is equal to, we'll type the name of the game object we put the script on, in this case, our inventory canvas, and then tell it that it needs to find the inventory manager component. Now at this point, we're not going to need the update function at all, so we're just gonna get rid of it. And I'm gonna add an on collision enter method here. Remember, this just fires anytime you collide, anytime this item collides with something. And all we wanna do here, first of all, is just check to see if the collision game object that hit it was in fact the player. And so we're going to use a tag system to make sure that the player is the one that hit this object. That way if an enemy collides with it, nothing will happen. 
And when the player collides with this item, what we want to do is talk to our inventory manager, and we're going to call a method called addItem, which for the moment it won't like because we haven't created it yet. But eventually, this will tell our inventory manager to add an item with a specific item name, quantity, and sprite. With that done, we simply want to destroy this game object. All right, let's head back into Unity to check this out. Now before we forget, we need to just take a moment to click on our player, head over to the tag, and make sure that our player is in fact tagged as player. Otherwise, the item won't recognize when the player collides with it. All right, now at the moment, if you click on your console, you'll find an ugly red message telling you our inventory manager does not have a definition for add item. So before we can do anything else, we need to fix that up. So let's head into our inventory manager. What we're just going to do here is create a new method, and this will be called, it will be public as another script will be talking to it. And we're going to call this one add item. Now in the brackets after add item, we're going to tell it what information is being passed into it. So it needs to know that a string is going to be coming in, which will tell it the item name. It will be getting an integer, which will be called quantity. And finally, it will be getting a sprite called item sprite. Now these are, of course, the three pieces of data that we pass along from our item when we collect it. Now just to be able to test this to make sure that everything is working, we're going to put in a debug log here. And I'm just going to type in item name, so those words will show up in my console, plus item name, so it will show the actual item name, and then do the same for quantity, plus quantity, and then plus the actual variable of quantity, and then plus item sprite, and then we'll plus the item sprite variable. Let's head back into Unity and see how this is working. All right, now with that done, our angry red message should be gone. We can now go to our item, where it will allow us to add our item script. The item script just wants to know a couple of things. First of all, it wants to know the name of the item. Mine is a coffee. How many of them there are? Let's go with three. And finally, if you're using a sprite, what sprite it is that you'd like to pass along. And mine is the coffee sprite. All right, let's test this out. All right, I'm just going to open up my console so that I can see the message when I collect the item. And when I walk over, the item disappears. Down here, I see that my item name is coffee, quantity three, item sprite, sprite, and it tells me the name of the sprite. All right, things are working quite nicely. Next up, we'll be making it so that these items actually appear in the inventory. That'll happen in the next video. See you there.